Good morning, everyone. So I am coming back today with another update on my baby girl who's still in the hospital. Um, so I think my last video that I put up of her, I mentioned that she was going in to have surgery to get a G-tube placed. Um, just because, you know, she still struggles. Um, well, she was struggling with um, taking her full feedings that they had her at. And um, she was originally before the surgery, they had bumped her up to I want to say 50 mls of milk so she was getting a little under two ounces um, of milk and <clears throat> so they did the surgery on Tuesday this past week and Everything, you know, went well. Um, they managed to get her. They did have to intubate her or put her on a ventilator, you know, doing surgery or whatnot. But they were able to get her off of it um, after the surgery was finished. And the surgery itself, it only lasted... Um, probably about 30, 45 minutes, maybe an hour. Um, <clears throat> but I know they said the longest part was having to actually wait and see if they could get the baby off of the ventilator. So um, when she came back up to her room, of course she was off of it. Um, well, she still pretty much had the tube in her or down her throat, but she was awake and she was alert um and i think they just pretty much had it placed in until um they got her situated back in her room um uh, when she came back up for surgery from surgery so um i know the surgeon said that her stomach was smaller than what he has actually seen and keep in mind that my baby was a preemie so I'm not sure if that had something to do with why her stomach was small, um, but he said he went, he put in the smallest tube that he had, which was like a 10 French or something like that, because um, he was going to go with the 12, but he went with the next or the smallest one he had. So right now she just has this long tube um, hanging out of her stomach. She doesn't have the actual um, um, tube that resembles a little button yet. But she'll get that in probably about five or six weeks um, when she goes back for her follow-up. Because I know when we leave the hospital... Um, in which we will be leaving the hospital Wednesday. Uh, one of her doctors have already put it in the books and wrote it down to get her discharged um, this Wednesday. So I am excited. I don't know what to do. And I'm a little overwhelmed because it's like, okay, do I have everything that I need for my baby? And I mean, there are some things that I'll probably need, but I'll give in to that later so um yeah like i said she'll go back for a follow-up and they'll schedule it i'm not sure when it's going to be scheduled but yeah later on she'll get you know a, another um tube or whatnot put in um i think this one she has now is just you know for right now until you know everything starts to heal and whatnot so my husband and I we yesterday when we went we had some a little bit of training done with um, how to actually use the pump that she'll be coming home with 
Now they have a different one in the hospital. Um, and I think it's called like a kangaroo pump or something like that. But I think when my daughter come home, she's going to have a different um, pump. So we did our training for that the other or yesterday. And I mean, it wasn't nothing too hard to do. Um, I'm trying to think. A lot has gone on. And I'm trying to make sure I remember everything. Oh, um, let me see. It was Wednesday after her surgery. Um, I think it was Wednesday. It was either Wednesday, that Wednesday or Thursday after her surgery. Um, she had to actually get taken back down to the O, not the, yeah, the OR, um, uh, because her tube, um, there was nothing going through the tube, I guess. So he had to, um, the surgeon actually had to basically redo some stitches that was around the tube, holding it in place to, um, I guess, relieve the pressure or whatnot. And even with the tube that she has, it's not really made for flushing, I guess because what was happening was when you know after they would administer her meds or something like that and would try to flush it um there was just a lot of there was a lot of pressure and everything was it was a lot of resistance put it pretty much and everything was flying back out of the tube so they had to take her back down to um, OR. And from what we were told that she would have to get open back up, maybe two stitches or something, because she has a um, she has an incision going up and down her abdomen. And it's probably about an inch and a half to two inches. It's not really that big but it's visible you can see it and then she has a little hole on the side where the tube is coming out of but they did the up and down incision because he had to go in and do um some kind of wrap i guess around the end of her esophagus or whatnot to um help with her reflux because she has reflux really bad and um since she had that um surgery done or had the wrap done she doesn't well from what i've noticed she doesn't reflux a lot or doesn't spit up a lot and um she's also or still on uh, reflux medication i think it's called prevacid if i'm not mistaken but she'll be on that for the next couple of months or so until they decide to take her off and i apologize if my lighting is not too good i'm on my tablet not on my actual camera so um that was the only thing that he had done but thank god he didn't have to go back in and open her all the way back up and you know do a whole bunch of extra stuff and it was just, you know, those stitches around the tube that was causing the issue. Um, so, let's see. The first night that she had her surgery, like I said, I had, a, I had a rough night. The baby had a rough night. Even though she was getting pain medication, she was just very, like, restless and wasn't too happy um but you know i did prepare myself when she had to go back down to the or i did prepare myself i packed the overnight bag and everything because i just don't want to leave my baby at the hospital you know in pain like that and you know i wanted to have eyes on her at all times so um 
And like I said, thankfully she didn't have to go back through the whole operation again. It was just a few stitches that he had to um, change out. So, like I said, I'm on my way there this morning to see her. My husband and my three-year-old stayed behind because my three-year-old is coming down with a sinus infection or something and this is going to be like the third one that she's had this year and it's just I don't know um it's like the first the first one she had never really went away but then she got another one and then the other day she was um get the get from beside this truck because he's been doing some crazy driving this morning um so yeah so we was outside at the hospital and she made a little friend out there and the little girl had a little cold too so now my daughter has it so um yeah i've been trying to work on that trying to get that under control before the baby comes home but I don't think it's going to be gone, you know, before Wednesday, but we'll see. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, my, um, baby, she did lose some weight because she had not eaten really in like two days with, you know, all this stuff that was going on with you know her having to have surgery and then they weren't sure if she would actually have you know have to go back through the whole surgery but she did i think the next day after her original surgery she did end up eating i think she took about five or ten mls so she was pretty happy with that um i know part of her fussiness was you know i'm hungry um so, yeah, she's gone from, since they've been working on her feelings again, trying to get her back up to where she was or close to it. She's gone from like 5 or 10 mLs from the beginning for this time to, I know last night she was getting like 35 or 40 mLs. And she's tolerated all of it. She's taken all of her bottles by mouth and she only gets um continuous feeds at night um actually using the kangaroo pump she only gets that at night and she gets like 30 it's either 30 or 40 mls um every four hours during the night so when she comes home, I'm not sure if she'll be on that same amount for the night, but I was playing with the pump yesterday at the hospital and it was pretty much, I, cause I wanted to see how much it was actually putting in. And I think like every five minutes or so, it was, you know, putting out a few drops. So it wasn't as fast as I was thinking in my mind that she would be getting fed through the night so every four hours um she'll be getting a certain amount and of course i would have to get up in the middle of the night um to check the pump and make sure there's still you know milk in the bag or whatnot from her or for her um So, yeah, like I said, Wednesday, we are looking to get her home. I have a lot of things that I need to do. Um, I'm not, honestly, I have gone, I've gone back to work at six weeks or seven weeks, actually. I went back to work, but I was only working like three or four days. And then I picked up a week that I was going to do five days a week. And that was the week that she had her surgery. Um, or so well, actually last week I had picked up like five days and um, 
I think I'm going to stay out. I know I'm going to stay out for the rest of this week, but I'm not sure about the following week. I might go in and work a few days or a couple of days or whatnot, you know. But I'll see how things go because, like I said, we have a lot of appointments that we need to get scheduled. And I don't know, you know, what <laughs> is going to be scheduled. And I would hate to be put on, you know, my work schedule and not know what day I need to take my daughter to the hospital or to the appointments and what um, time and then have to get taken off. So I did inform my... Um, manager that I will probably need the next couple of weeks off but if it's something that I can do I will let her know and I hope and pray that they are very understanding um, towards my situation because I didn't plan to go through this again um, I mean the baby was playing but everything that comes along with it you know if something goes wrong i didn't plan to have to go through all of this again so <coughs> right now i'm just doing what i can do what i can't do i'm just trying to keep people informed and let them know this is not going to work for me um because i'm pretty sure everybody knows how it is and you have to come to the hospital every day if you've been in a situation, you have to come to the hospital every day and you don't know what is going to happen, you know, in my case, because being in the NICU is not easy and I don't care how many times you've had a premature baby or a baby period that has had to stay in the NICU, it is never the same, it's different every time. So I am here at this hospital and it's going to get dark and I'm just going in the parking deck right now. So yeah, like I was saying, it's um it's never the same experience when you know you have to deal with the NICU because <clears throat> every baby is different and every situation is different each time. So I've been trying to um. remain positive and focused throughout this whole experience again. So I can get one of these parts but yeah um, I hope I have everything that I need for her because I mean I have a lot of stuff from sorry my hand was in the way from my um, other daughter things that she never wore and things that she barely wore and then I have people have given us a lot of like preemie clothes and my daughter she can't even wear half of them anymore like the little onesies she can wear but she's so long like we have some pant outfits she can't even wear the pant outfits because they look like cap little capris, little baby capris on her. Um, and she's probably worn them like once or twice while she's been here in the hospital. So, um, 
we pretty much doing away with the preemie clothes except for you know some of the onesies that she can still wear but now that she has this g tube i'm like okay i need clothes with snaps because <laughs> I don't want, you know, the shirts or the onesies to, you know, put a lot of pressure on um, the tube. Especially not right now because, it's, you know, she's still trying to heal and things like that. And I don't want it to cause any issues with the tube. So, um, probably this week if I can, I'll probably go and look for some, um onesies or something with some snaps on it to try to keep this tube covered as much as possible because I know once she gets home um I mean not saying I'm ashamed that she has this too but you know as far as like having visitors and things like that I don't want people to be pulling around on it and things like that so, just try to keep it as secure as possible and keep it out of reach um, so it's not in the way. Because even now, it gets in my way when I'm, when I'm trying to change her because it's so long. It has to be at least maybe 13, 12 to 13, maybe 14 inches long. But, um... And probably not even that long. But, I mean, it's long enough that it hangs and it gets in the way. So, I'll be glad when she gets this other one. So, um. And like I said, we have a few appointments. I need to make an appointment with her primary. And I know she'll be coming back over here um, to an office building beside the hospital to see to the special infant care clinic and... She'll be getting seen by the surgeons or people who, you know, pretty much take care of the G2. Um, who else? She'll have a physical therapist that will come home with her at some point. Um, I just have to let them know whenever she comes home. Um, which the lady has been calling me for the last month or so and I hate to tell her every time you know my daughter isn't home yet she's still in the hospital but I mean it's nothing I can do on that part because I haven't you know been um able to get a discharge to me because of certain reasons and wanted to make sure she was gaining weight and then she had this surgery so um, I'm hoping and praying, you know, like I said, Wednesday is the day because it was actually supposed to be Tuesday, this Tuesday, but she has an eye exam, which the eye doctor will come here and, um, do her exam. And that's another appointment that we'll have to make as well. Um, cause I know he's going to have to follow up with her every few weeks or every month or something like that to, um, get her eyes looked at to make sure that they are um, still developing correctly and she will have to have another MRI schedule um, because she had some bleeding on her brain um, and they caught that earlier on but they said it looks like it's healing so I'm praying and hoping that as she grows it continues to work itself out so, um, I'm not sure when the MRI will actually get done. It'll probably be a few more months before that is done. But I'm not sure if they're going to go ahead and schedule it or just have me call later on um, when she's probably about four, six, or eight months old to schedule that appointment for an MRI on her head. Um, but yeah, that's about all I can think of right now as far as appointments, who all we will probably be seeing. But like I said, I know these next few months are going to be very busy. So whenever I go back to work, I'm going to um, 
I will have to tweak my work schedule a little bit just so I can be comfortable and I can still work at the same time and so that you know my family is comfortable because when I was working like full time like really working full time it was just it started to get to be too much um so I felt like you know once I finally stayed home like it all kicked in like I've been missing out on a lot because I've been working so hard trying to make sure, you know, the child that I had at home had everything and I, you know, worked and made money to buy her uh, whatever it is that she needed and take care of myself and, you know, things that we needed for home. But um, my kids are my everything. So if I can't work, if I can't take care of them, um, really, if I can't take care of them, then I'm no good at all. So I know I'll have to be there for them more, um, cause they are young and I don't want them to grow up and, you know, be like, mommy was never there or whatnot. So, and I definitely don't want my husband to feel overwhelmed and feel like I'm trying to stay away from home and keep him with two kids. Like, I don't want him to feel like that. So... Um, we've already pretty much discussed how I'm going to work, but if it becomes an issue, um, I mean, because he's comfortable with how I'm, how I plan on working, but if it becomes an issue in the end, then, I mean, I may just have to figure something else out to do because, you know... Like I said, I want to be there for my kids, and I want to be able to work still. But I don't want to, you know, miss out on important moments either. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, everything with my baby that's in the hospital here, she's doing good so far. So, I guess I'll go up and see what the plan is for her today how much milk she's probably going to be getting and seeing if she i think she gained some weight last night when my husband called so i know she's probably doing good she's probably missing me because the nurse said um she was a little fussy so or last night she was fussy so she's probably missing my husband or i so, um, yeah, you all keep us in your prayers, and I will probably be back on once we get her home and get situated. I'll probably give a little update if I don't do it the day that she does get discharged. So, let's keep our fingers crossed for Wednesday, and, um, yeah, just pray for the best. So I'll see you all then. Bye-bye.